Alleluia. Christ is risen. Amen, amen. Welcome to Franklin Presbyterian Church, where we are seeking God and serving all people. We welcome you all to this wonderful worship where we celebrate our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, today together. Welcome to all those who are visiting with us, whether for the first time, for the second time, or any time, whether in person here or with us online as well today, you are welcome here in God's house today. We will be uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper together as well this morning at the end of the service, and you're all invited to be part of that celebration as well. A few announcements before we begin. You'll notice in your bulletin there's a little envelope and a little more information about a special offering. Um, we have four of these per year. Uh, this one is one great hour of sharing, and you can see some of the things that uh, are funded by this, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, Presbyterian Hunger Fu uh, Program, and the self-development of people. So give as God leads you. In that way, you can just use this little envelope if you have anything uh, to give for that today as well. Uh, adult Sunday School, we obviously didn't have it this morning because we had a wonderful uh, Easter breakfast for those who were here. Thank you for all of those uh, who made that and served that and enjoyed that time of fellowship together. Uh, Adult Sunday School will start back up next week at 9.45 once again. Um, and our next Bible study will take this week off, and we're going to start the Tuesday following, uh, so the 18th, at 6.30, again on uh, Zoom and at the Cornerstone. Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes, Prentice. All right, Saturday at 10 o'clock, the Men's Fellowship Group will be meeting. 10 a.m. Saturday, all right. Any others? All right, we will continue our worship together. Please join me, uh, the choir, in singing the Alleluia. <laughs> Please stand as we sing, 157.
Good morning. It's a blessing that we can all gather together here on Easter morning. So let's pass the peace. Uh, let us wave and smile to one another and even towards the camera for those streaming online and share God's peace with each other on this day of Christ rising. peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, we give you thanks for the new life you raise up in us through the mystery of our baptism, through the sorrow of the heavy cross, the surprise of the empty tomb, the love that death could not destroy. By the power of your Holy Spirit poured out upon us in baptism, fill us with the joy of resurrection so that we may be a living sign of your new heaven and your new earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved, all of us, like sheep, have gone astray, but now we have returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. And all God's people said, Alleluia. We can say Alleluia. We can say Amen. We can say it all day. All day. This is a great day for it. As we go to God with the prayers of the people, our congregational prayer, a few uh, requests and updates. Um, Deb Thompson's nephew, Dan, we... Uh, had a prayer request about his recent diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Um, further tests show that it is at stage one, so that's good news. Um, however, that family is also now dealing with a tragedy as Dan's son, Cole, uh, died in a car accident on Friday night, uh, 34 years old. And so the Thompsons are traveling now to be with family, and let's keep them and the Pensick family uh, through illnesses and now through an untimely death in their family during this time. We continue to keep uh, Edith Wagner, Linda's sister, in our prayers as her, with her upcoming kidney removal surgery um, and also pray for the Pulliam's grandson, Ben Elliott. He's in Franklin Hospital on some IV antibiotics. He was bitten by a cat and so he is getting treatment for that right now. So we keep Ben in our prayers as well. Um, and all of those who are undergoing treatment or testing for various uh, ailments, we think of Larry Smith, Mary Frances Page, Steve Van Trees, the Lacey Poppy family, Leo Gemmon, and Debbie's sister, Nancy. We keep all of them in prayer this morning. Are there other joys or concerns to share with everyone this morning? Debbie's is your friend, right? Your friend Trish uh, had a recent knee replacement and it is now infected. So prayers for her in that recovery um, and that that infection may uh, be taken care of and she can continue on with her recovery. Any others to share? Let us go to God in prayer together this morning. Living God, hear our prayer this joyous morning. Before we call, you answer, O oh Lord. Before we speak, you already know the words. Let there be joy in Jerusalem and peace among all nations. Let sounds of weeping and cries of distress turn to shouts of joy and laughter. Let infants grow and thrive and let the old dance like children once again. Let every person find a home and enjoy the fruit of their labor. Let the wolf and the lamb live in peace. Let no one hurt or destroy another. Show us, O oh God, 
the holy mountain you have prepared, the new heaven and the new earth you have promised, so that we may be glad and rejoice in your presence forever. Hear our prayers, gracious God. Know our hearts, risen Christ. Guide our steps, comforting spirit. Let us close our prayer together this morning with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite all the children up here to the front for the children's message with Pastor Bailey. Morning, you guys. Happy Easter. So we've got... Do you guys hear that? It's not a lamb. It's two babies, man. Did you see them? No, it was, it was just, it was last week. It was, well. We're going to need that. Okay, I need a helper. We got to put this down because that's a baby. So we got to keep the carpet clean. We're going to pull it out and we're going to spread it out. You'll help, you'll help. How does this, what is this? Oh, okay, so just, okay, we lay it flat. Let's lay it flat. There we go. All right. All right. Okay, guys. So tell me, tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. Two baby lambs. They're black and they're white. Are they, they have bigger, well, they're, those are numbers. I don't know if they have names. Are they big or small? They're small. Is this? I think they're both kind of little. They're both smaller than you, right? Okay, so I have a question. Can these lambs, they smell like hay. Oh, he does not want that. So, okay. So, all right, guys. That's fine. That's why, we, that's why we have this. So I have a question. Can these lambs take care of themselves? No. No, why not? Because they're just lambs. Because they're, yeah, because they're, well, and they're, to, they're babies, right? That's okay. You do that every day. Okay, guys, what do these babies need? Food. What else do they, food, what else do they need? Milk, water. Do they have, can, can, they go, can they be by themselves? Can they be by themselves? No, who has to take care of them? Their mom. And who else? The farmer. Right, so Mr. Barry helps take care of these lambs, right? So sometimes Jesus talks about people like we are lambs. Yeah. Why, would, why would Jesus call us a lamb? Why are we like this? Because we're little. You're, we're little and we're children. And we need to be taken care of. Do you think that Mr. Barry takes really good care of these lambs? Yeah. Why do you think he takes such good care of them? Because they're so cute and they're small. And he cares about them, right? That's right. Can you, Joe, can you scoot this one a little more onto the plastic? Thank you. 
So if Jesus says that we are like lambs, do you think he takes good care of us? That's okay. That's what a carpet cleaner is for. That's fine. That's what, that's what shampoo is for. So remember, when you, read, when you read in the Bible, right, that we are like sheep or like lambs, remember that God takes good care of you the same way Mr. Barry takes care of these and gives us everything we need, all right? Now you can pet them. That's all the lesson. You can keep petting them. Aren't they soft? They've got big eyes. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. Do you think you guys? <laughs> I'm going to the bathroom everywhere. That's, I know. That's why we got this plastic thing. That's why we got it. I know. I'm fixing to go get a paper towel. All right. Thank you for bringing these lambs for us to play with, Barry. That's okay. That's all right. Bah. All right. Okay. Can you guys say thank you? Yes, we do. That's correct. Say bye, folks. Bye. Oh, please don't hold that over my head. Thank you. All right. I know. Okay. exciting sitting up front sometimes. So. <laughs> uh, before we uh, have our uh, reading from the New Testament, I want to offer a prayer of illumination. Living God, by your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see the light, new light of this day. Open our mouths to tell of the empty tomb. Open our hearts to believe the good news. May we hear your word this morning and feel the transformation of your message to our lives. Amen. Uh, the reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out <clears throat> and ran towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. A word of God from the people of God.
Our second gospel reading from John comes from chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Gospel according to John 21, verses 1 through 19. Let's listen to and for God's word for us this morning. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to him, follow me. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, what an honor it is to hear your word this morning as your people. As we celebrate your resurrection, may we know more clearly how to live as your disciples. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning, beloved. Easter Sunday is a joyous occasion. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen. We can keep going. I'm not going to stop you. (laughs) Yet sometimes we may find ourselves in the midst of the Lenten season wishing for Easter Sunday before it's time. We just want Easter to get here already. 
In the silent contemplation of Ash Wednesday, we may not want to think about our mortality, the reality of the death that's coming for each and every one of us. We might want to fast forward to Easter. During our study of Lamentations during Sunday school, we wanted to skip ahead to chapter 3 because we knew that there was hope where it tells us that the steadfast love of our Lord endures forever. That no, no matter how hard our life is or can be or how devastating the tragedy or injustice that we see or experience, that morning by morning new mercies we see. During Holy Week, when we read about the arrest of Jesus, his betrayal by one of his closest disciples, the way Jesus was treated by the soldiers, by the crowds, by the government officials, by the religious leaders, we want to get to Sunday even more quickly. And when we hear and remember how Jesus was flogged and mocked, how he was put upon the cross, despite being innocent of any crime, how Jesus took all of that abuse for the sake of justice, grace, and love, we don't want to dwell on it. When Jesus sighed his last breath and the sun refused to shine on that Friday long ago on the hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull, when we feel that darkness surrounding us, we want the brilliant light and the alleluias of Sunday, Easter Sunday morning. Beloved, it's here. Easter Sunday is here. Christ is risen. And now that Easter has arrived, we're going to fast forward past Easter. What are you doing, Pastor? This is ridiculous. I know. Yet there's wisdom in this story about the resurrection appearance of Jesus at the Sea of Galilee from John 21. A fishing tale that tells us something about our God, about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and about ourselves. It's a real whopper that gives us hope about our future as disciples of Jesus Christ. Because amidst the pain and suffering and injustice of our world, we see grace and love as our provision. That's been our Lenten theme this spring, that through all sorts of circumstances, God provides. Through the life of Jesus Christ, during his temptation in the wilderness, his feeding of the crowds, the way God provided for the Israelites in the desert for the prophet Elijah, for the shunned Hagar, again this morning, in the light of Easter dawn, we see God's provision on a whole new level. In John 21, we read that some of the disciples chose to go fishing. We might be surprised that they are not out spreading the good news of Jesus' resurrection, but are rather back in Galilee, where this whole journey with Jesus began. However, if we take a moment and think about how we may have dealt with trauma or tough times in our own lives, this might make a whole lot more sense. Getting back to something familiar often is exactly what we tend to do when things are tense. Even when things are good but intense. It might be an easy time to clear one's head, especially for Peter and James and John, all mentioned specifically here in John 21, as they were fishermen before they were disciples. Yet things didn't go too well on their little fishing expedition. Maybe it was that they were a little rusty with their fishing skills. It had been three years after all. Maybe it was that they were distracted by all that had been happening recently. Maybe the other disciples that weren't really fishermen, they were really, you know, mucking things up for them all. Maybe it was because they'd forgotten where the good fishing spots were. Jesus, of course, comes along, calling to them from the beach, yet they don't know who he is. They admit they have no fish, that they've been trying all night and have none. Amazingly, the disciples take Jesus' advice about casting their nets on the other side. They don't know this guy. They are mostly experienced fishermen, yet any catch of fish has already eluded them through the night, so they will humble themselves and take advice of this stranger on the beach. This turns out to be a solid plan, of course. 
As they not only catch some fish, they make a huge haul. Without breaking the net, they take in 153 fish. One thing the disciples did not recognize before taking his advice, of course, was that this was Jesus. But they did recognize their need for help. They did recognize how desperate they were for any help, even from a stranger on the beach. Even if it was merely to have a moment of clarity and peace after the roller coaster of emotions of the past week, of losing their rabbi and friend to a violent death at the hands of those who wanted to keep the status quo, to keep power and control and wealth only among a small group. The pain and sadness of that event, the pain and sadness of guilt of having run away when they were scared, the betrayal Peter had when he mustered the courage to follow Jesus into the courtyard when he denied knowing Jesus three times. And of course of the joy of his resurrection, of the hope that his return to life had given them. Even in all of that as they wept in the night after Jesus' death and the joy that came on Easter morning for them all, that move from deep grief to a measurable elation, is a tough transition. The simplicity of time on the water, the peace of fishing, that was the goal. They sought that secret peace of Jesus once more in a familiar place. The Gospel of John begins way back at the beginning in chapter 1 by stating how John the Baptist was a witness to the light of Christ. The resurrection story recounts how Mary Magdalene was the witness to the resurrection. And here we see the disciples being commissioned to be witnesses to Christ elsewhere. But like much of the time, the disciples are a little slow to recognize it. The beloved disciple finally is the first one to recognize Jesus. Yet he doesn't take action. Peter is slow to recognize Jesus, but when he does, he is all action as usual. This story of a miraculous catch of fish after the resurrection can inspire us to reassess how we recognize Jesus in our own lives. How we see what he is doing in in us and how we will react when we recognize him. Will we be attuned to the presence of Christ in our lives like the disciple Jesus loved? Will we be quick to spring to action when seeing Christ in our lives like Peter? Will we be like the other five disciples and neither see Christ quickly nor do a whole lot yet and wait for the right time? As with the many stories of the disciples, each of these disciples is a little bit of a part of the story, how we are supposed to respond. If we take the contemplative and quiet spiritual practices side of the beloved disciple, we may discern new ways to understand and know our Savior. And if we take the bold and instinctive action side of Peter, we may discover new people and new challenges in how we live our lives in bold love for God and neighbor. Along the shore on the northern side of the Sea of Galilee, or the Sea of Tiberias, as John calls it here. There's a church called the Church of the Primacy of Peter. The church building is dark gray stone and stands right up against the water. Nearby is a small outdoor concrete area with benches and a few trees. Next to the church is a small beach with some stones and a little bit of sand. This is the traditional spot for the story we read today. The church building that stands there is only about 80 or 90 years old, but there have been churches on this spot since at least the 4th century. Inside the small church is a rock. In fact, the church is built around a rather large rock. Tradition says this is the rock upon which Jesus laid out fish and bread for his disciples to eat after this resurrection appearance. And upon this rock, where Jesus asked Peter the three questions we heard. Simon, son of John, Jesus says. The other time Jesus uses Peter's real name and his father's name is when he calls him to be his disciple 
from the same shoreline. The story is all about redemption. After denying Jesus three times, Jesus gives Peter three chances at redemption. Upon the rock around which they stand, Jesus will build the church. Simon's nickname from Jesus is Peter, which means rock in Greek, as Cephas does in Aramaic. The full circle at the Sea of Galilee from Jesus calling Peter to follow him to the way in which Jesus offers understanding and a commission to feed his sheep. The transformation from Simon the fisherman to Cephas the rock to Peter the shepherd. The disciple who is called to do so many things as a follower of Christ. The disciple who in this story reflects all of us who may feel sinful and ashamed but are redeemed by the good shepherd, this Jesus, this God and human alike. This is the Lord, as the beloved disciple points out. Jesus called Peter to fish for people, and now Peter is called to tend and feed Christ's sheep. This time, however, the cost of discipleship that Jesus offers is more stark and more frank. For when Jesus tells Peter a second time to follow me, the path is to the cross. A path that is treacherous and difficult, yet a path we too are asked to follow. This place along the lake shore truly is a place of transformation. Jesus is asking Peter and the disciples and us to follow him in many different ways. To fish for people by sharing the gospel message of Jesus Christ that we know and love. To witness to the light of our Lord Jesus Christ as he is risen on this Easter Sunday. To haul in the nets overflowing with the fish that Christ's guidance has helped us find. To recognize that Christ is alive in this world. To feed those without food to clothe clothe those who are naked and ashamed, to tend the sheep that we are asked to care for as disciples of Jesus Christ, to take action, to be the hands and feet of Christ each and every day, and to follow him all the way to the cross, even when we want to just hit fast forward. We must share what we have learned and experienced We must share the place where the abundance is that Jesus has showed us where we've hauled in 153 fish or thereabouts. We must share how we are loved and saved and redeemed and shown how to live by the one who death could not hold. Just as Jesus gave rest and nourishment to his disciples along the shores of that sea, He also gives gives us knowledge and understanding, love and mercy, grace and peace, because we are fed by his Holy Spirit and our study of the word. As we celebrate the table of Christ together this morning, let us remember that rock where a charcoal fire and fish and bread were laid out by Jesus, a meal of nourishment, a meal of community, a meal of covenant, a meal of grace. For Christ in his resurrection calls us once again anew on this Easter morning and says, follow me. As Peter was, we are called to follow Jesus all the way to the cross. And yet there is hope because the Lord's steadfast love is everlasting. And the hope and grace and joy of Easter morning is with us every step of the way. As we fish for sheep in the waters and pastures of our lives, we know who provides life to us. It is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the bread of life, the living waters. These are God's provisions for us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. 
gracious and loving God, may we know you more fully in this very moment. May we recognize you in our daily lives. May we take action in our daily lives. May we seek to follow you in all sorts of new and exciting ways in our lives as you call us. Whether to fish or to tend sheep or a little bit of both. O Christ, you have conquered death. You have risen again into new life. A new life you promise to all of us who love and follow you. Our love for you is deep and yet just a reflection of the love you have first had for us. Help us and have mercy on us. Give us peace in the name of your son Jesus who feeds us, provides for us, and in the Holy Spirit comforts, guides, and sustains all of your beloved creation. Amen.
Please remain standing if you would. And join us as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You may find a version of it on page 35 at the very front of your hymnal. Or you may just say the words that you already know in your heart. Let us say them together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. It's now time for the invitation to the offering. Those in attendance today can use the offering plates near both exits, while those worshiping online with us are encouraged to mail in their gifts, give online from the church website, or through their bank's bill pay system. On this day of celebration, when we rejoice at God's greatest gift of life in Jesus Christ, the resurrection is our rallying point. The light of the newness in which we see your face or triumph over death and sin. May we give them your material blessings, O God, that your kingdom may grow. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Great and gracious Lord, we sing hallelujah in your name, in your name joyfully, joyfully, knowing that you are risen. Accept that these gifts of our hearts and our blessings as your work continues in our congregation and in our community. May we live as ones who have been redeemed, teaching and learning from the people who we are blessed to be with in your world. Amen. Beloved, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we also remember his death and the final meal that he shared with his friends. The feast we are about to share is a special moment in which our risen Lord meets us at this table. Peter declared God's impartial invitation that in every nation, anyone who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to God. Jesus ate and drank with people from all walks of life, especially those who were considered sinners and outcasts. Friends, we are invited here by Christ, every one of us. Alleluia, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, three in one, you spoke the word into being and breathed your own spirit into us. You have journeyed with us through famines, rescued us from oppression, and delivered us to freedom. Even when we forgot you, you did not forget us, calling us back through prophets and reminding us of your promises. We remember you and sing with the voices of all times and places.
Oh God, thank you for your faithfulness from generation to generation, and especially for your Son, Jesus Christ. He walks with us along the way and makes our hearts burn with his teaching. He breaks bread with us and opens our eyes to see your grace. He anoints us with your healing and pours out your love with abandon. And at his last supper, Jesus Christ, our Lord, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. And he said, take this and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we celebrate the Lord's death until he comes again. Thank you, O God, for this bread of life that Jesus blesses and shares his very own body. Thank you for this cup of salvation poured out for our forgiveness, his very own blood. May we now consider the great mystery of our faith. By the power of your spirit, O oh God, make these gifts a holy meal. Nourish us, restore us, and equip us to do your will. Our hearts and hands are yours, O oh Lord, dedicated to your service and offering of praise. Keep us faithful until that day when we will gather at your table in glory, celebrating with all your children a feast of endless love. All honor and praise to you, holy God, three in one, now and forever. God's blessing upon this meal we now share in this abundant feast together. Let us proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. Alleluia. Amen. Beloved, all is ready. We are going to take communion today by intinction, which means you will take a piece of bread and dip it into the cup. If you would prefer to have a cup of your own, there are some available here as well at the table, and then you eat them together. May the elders come forward to help us serve God's people today. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. salvation. Salvation. 
cup of salvation. Cup of salvation. The cup of salvation. to 
him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in our church and in Christ Jesus to all generations. Hallelujah.